in this experiment we are looking at the growth of leaf yeast on malt agar plates the first step here is to disinfect the working area and the equipment that's going to be used this is to ensure that the area is sterile i.e free from microorganisms because they could affect the experiment as they could get into the agar plate and grow which is not what we want then what i did was just i picked three different types of leaves because this was done at a time, time of year where leaf yeast wouldn't be that prevalent because it was done in early january preferably this is done in may or september where leaf yeast is plentiful so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the now disinfect uh, scissors to start cutting out small pieces of the leaf i'm just going to go through and use three different leaves again just to try and increase my chances of getting some leaf yeast and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some vaseline and i'm going to put the vaseline on the surface of the little sections of leaf so what you'll see here is i'm going to show you the leaf the shiny surface and then the bottom surface the vaseline goes on the sh shiny upper surface because that's the part that will be attached to the lid of the malt agar plates and this is because leaf yeast is found on the underside of the plant so when they, these leaf pieces have been attached to the agar we leave them standing for 24 hours to allow for the leaf yeast to fall onto the malt agar which is its nutrient which will allow it to grow and then we flip these plates and we incubate them for three to five days. So what you see here is I take the forceps and I start adding the individual pieces to the surface of the lid. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to ensure that I open up the plate as little as possible and for as little time as possible. This is to try and prevent any contamination because if the lid was just left open for a long period of time, other bacteria, other fungi get in there and then you might have a contaminated plate, which is not what you want. So that's our first plate done. 24 hours in that position allowing any yeast, leaf yeast that's present to fall onto the surface now what you'll see is i just do the exact same process with the other two leaves whereby i'm cutting it into small individual pieces i'm adding vaseline i'm then going to add it to the surface of another plate and then i do it with the third set of leaves again what you'll see at the end here as well is there's a fourth plate and this is going to be our control plate it is not going to be opened in the slightest because we want no contamination so we don't want anything growing in our control plate because we're going to use it for comparison to prove that any growth in the experimental plates came from the leaves rather than from any other source so nearly done there once it's done what you see is when i'm sealing these plates i don't seal them fully if you seal them fully it can be quite dangerous because anaerobic bacteria or fungi can develop and they can be quite harmful so instead what we do is we get a bit of sellotape and we just put two small pieces on either side to keep the lid sealed but it's not so sealed that oxygen and air can't move in. Now, as you can see there, I'm just setting up the sellotape so I can do this really quickly in terms of closing up each lid. And that wasn't even sped up. I was actually just that efficient. So what's going to happen here now, as you can see, I put two pieces on each plate and then I'm going to leave them standing for 24 hours. Then they get flipped and incubated for three to five days at about 25 degrees. This will give time for any colonies that might be present to develop to the point that we can actually see them because yeast is very, very small. And what we'll see now is the results. So there is our first plate. There was no growth whatsoever on this one. So there was no leaf yeast. There's our control. Again, no growth, which is what we'd expect. This plate, however, did have a few small little colonies, which was brilliant to see, showing that there was in fact some leaf yeast present. The last one didn't have leaf yeast, but one of the leaves fell onto the agar plate, and we've seen the development of some other type of fungi or bacteria. And just to show you, that's what a plate would look like during, say, summer months where the leaf yeast is far more plentiful. You can see the shiny pink colonies that are found on the agar plate. Working or is it stopped working again? 